Last week I did a video about the seven best AI stocks to buy. And then at our stock talk, uh, we're getting a lot of new people coming and they're saying, we're getting into the stock market. We buy, we buy into your thesis that um, artificial intelligence, machine learning, quantum computing is going to make some real money in the future for those people who buy. So. But the question is, where do you buy in? Uh, is is NVIDIA overpriced now? It's run up so. Uh, is super micro com computers, uh, because it's going into a dip, is, is this the time to buy? How about Amazon? How about Meta? How about Google? Where do you buy? Well, again, last week I told you, I showed you a, a chart uh, that I had created, a spreadsheet. And what I've added some things to it, such as the relative uh, strength, which gives you an indication of where a stock is overbought or oversold. And then I've added to it also um, the buy-sell uh, momentum that uh, gives you an indication is is the stock going to in the future go down or is it going to go up so i want to share that with you uh, um I, as i say i've up updated this spreadsheet and what i'm going to ask you to do is when i when i get the spreadsheet up you stop your video and you print you push your print screen um uh on your on your keyboard and then print the screen that shows what i'm what i'm sharing with you okay let's get at it this is this is my hope that I can help you make a decision on where do you, where do you get in? As, as Bezos said uh, on, on our, our call, I'm new to this. I don't know where to buy. My friends are asking me, where do we, where do we buy these stocks? This, I think, will give you some help. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. This is a spreadsheet I showed you last week, but I've added these columns over here, the relative strength, the buy-sell uh, pressure, and then my recommendation rel relative to buy, sell, or hold, and then the price target at which I'm trying to buy these stocks at if they come to my price. But let me explain to you as if you'd never seen it before. Uh, again, and I'll start with Apple. Uh, this is its current price, and because this is a, a live spreadsheet, you'll see the current price change every, it changes every 10 to 15 minutes as, as the market is open. Um, this is my research on uh, their earnings calls, and what they tell me, that is, Apple's executives tell me that they're expecting their earnings to grow by 6.5% in 2024, and they're expecting uh, the revenues to grow by 3.4%. This is from my uh, subscription to Zacks, and I monitor all the uh, analysts and get a consensus price of what they think Apple is going to sell for um, about this time next year. So they're saying it's going to go up from 192 to 201, which is a 5% increase. Now, this is relative strength. And what that means, there you just saw the prices change. What that means is you can look at a, at a, at a chart and you can see that a stock runs up and it gets to a peak. And normally, if it gets over 50, it it's means that there's a lot of momentum about it uh, and, and maybe we're pushing the price too high. If, on the other hand, it gets below 50, that means that the, uh, maybe the momentum is, is allowing the price to come down and it's becoming oversold. So there will be more buyers coming in up. So you want to buy a stock when its relative strength is, is low, and you want to potentially sell a stock when its relative strength is high. Let's look at advanced micro devices. They've made some announcements that they're going to uh, put out a chip that is going to challenge NVIDIA's chip. And so you can see that uh, its relative strength is all the way up to 70%. That's high. Now, what I believe is that that price will come down in the future. So it's right now selling for $133.37. Uh, 
I believe I'll be able to buy it at 111. In fact, I'll, I'll put an order in uh, at my brokerage account for $111.63 and say, good to cancel. So that if for some reason uh, something happens, maybe uh, China in, invades Taiwan and that price drops, or we think they did, and it drops down to 111, it'll fill it. Okay. What I do is every day before the market opens, I go to my order sheet and I see what are my orders in? What do I know? What happened last night that maybe will change this? And, it, and would I still be okay with that? So that's how I look at it. And again, uh, I've highlighted and then those stocks whose relative strength uh, is putting it in a oversold position. Again, a stock that I like, um, uh, AE, AEHR test systems, which I hold some of, is currently selling at 25. It's saying that they're their earnings are going to grow by 77% and their uh, their revenues will grow by 58%. Well, that's good. I mean, anytime you see earnings or revenues growing by over 20% in the coming year, that's that's excellent. That that's really uh, a, a good a good thing. And the as you can see, the consensus of the analysts agree with that. They're saying this this is a stock that could be worth sixty dollars by the end of twenty twenty four, and it's at twenty five seventy two. Okay, why is that? How could that be? Because they're 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 in a different element of uh, building out. Um, the data centers. Everybody knows who who NVIDIA is. Everybody knows who Apple and Amazon and Google is. But most people don't know who AEHR Systems and, and the, you don't know who their CEO is. You don't see them uh, being invited to the, the big conferences. They're just doing something that needs to be done and they're doing it profitably. As again, you see their relative strength is below 50. So that makes it and, and their their buy-sell pressure is about two. So that tells Tells me that some people are waking up to this. If it's if it's above a negative number, they're saying that there is there is an awareness. Now I have an order in on it to buy at twenty one thirty nine. I already hold I think about four hundred shares. I'm trying to buy another hundred shares at uh, twenty one thirty nine. If it gets close to it, uh, I, I look at it in the morning. It's getting close. Uh, the the relative strength is changing. The the buy sell pressure is changing. I, I might bring it up to you know twenty two dollars a share, but I'm I'm creating a system and then I'm working that system every day. Let's look at some others that that I, I'm trying to to get into. I'm trying to build my position in Amazon. Why is that? Because Amazon is one of the people who owns quantum computers, and and we'll talk about IBM in a second. They're trading right now at one forty five oh five. They're saying they're. You just see it; it changed. It's now 145.22, um, and and they're they're anticipating a growth in earnings of 27 percent. Remember, I told you anything over 20 that that's excellent. We want we want it to consider again. Consensus is that this stock is going to go to 173 next year. That's a 19 percent bump. Uh, its relative strength is um, it's it's right above 50. It's not below 50, and it's its um, uh, buy sell pressure is just above um, just above one. So I'm a buyer of Amazon. Again, I want to buy it at 121. I, I've got a ways to go. Now, again, if some incident happens, if let's let's just say Jerome Powell would would show up this next week and say uh, I'm raising interest rates one more time, I'd probably get my price. Okay, so I'm waiting for an event. I believe that with with the the interest rates and and uh, the the overwhelming U.S. debt and a war in Ukraine and a war in Israel, I I can be aggressive at this point for looking for a price. All right. Now I wanted to talk to you about uh, IBM. I did a video where I shared with you that IBM is developing a quantum computer. And within three years, uh, IBM is, is going to explode, okay? But I want you to see here, IBM is not projecting big uh, earnings or, or growth uh, in earnings 
or revenues over the next year, uh, and their their, um, their their growth projected next year in price by the the consensus is that it's going to be down ten percent. Um, and I think, and, and then if we go and look at their relative strength, we can see it's got a 79. Again, anything over 50 means it's overbought. And if you'll look at a chart on IBM, you'll see it's, it's just been climbing straight up because uh, Wall Street knows they're going to turn this company around uh, as a result of quantum computing. But I think I can buy it at a, a discount. I think I can buy it at uh, 40, 146. Another one you see, Snowflake is a cybersecurity uh, company, uh, and they're very heavy into AI, and they have a different w platform. It's kind of a pay-as-you-go kind of platform, which is different than others, and they had good earnings just recently, and they ran up substantially, and they're projecting they're going to have good earnings in the future. Uh, their growth in earnings next year are, is up 179%. That's only, I think, second to NVIDIA's. Um, and, and, and they're projecting their revenues will grow by 33%. But look at this. Um, their, uh, their, their price growth based on the consensus, they're at 195.88 right now, it's only going to grow 4% to 204. So I believe, and it, the relative strength index shows me, that they're, they're, over, um, they're overbought. Second only to, in my charts, uh, of IBM. Um, and their buy-sell ratio is at 18, which also says there's a lot of momentum I don't want to buy it at 195.88. I want to buy it at 166. Okay, this is something I revisit every day. Uh, and I, I share this with my people uh, because it's all going to change. It'll change tomorrow. But it, it's a system that I work that I then share with on my uh, cheat sheet on my, at our website, yeah, it costs you 60 bucks to get inside my head and the work that I've done. And the understanding, you, you know, I think what, what happens is you get into this and you think, oh, it's, it's easy. You, all you do is buy the stocks that are going. No, you've got to understand why. You've got to understand their financials. You've got to understand their debt. You've got to understand technical analysis. Is that stock overbought? Is that stock oversold? And then make your decisions based on that. If you choose to learn to do this, hooray for you. If you'd like me to do it for you, hooray for me. Okay? Uh, I enjoy it. I've learned it. I'm a retired financial advisor. I really did. This is actually more than financial advice. It's financial analysis. I've, there are, I think there are 6,582 stocks in the world. I've brought it down to 20. And now I've brought it down even, even more refined as to which ones are going to grow, which ones are going to give us the return, and which ones are overbought, meaning the price is already too high, and which ones are oversold, meaning that the price is low, and now's the time to buy in. So I hope that helps you. Again, stop your computer, print, do your print screen, put this, uh, print it up, and study it and learn it and decide, do you want to go and do this on your own or do you want our help? If you want our help, just get on the bus.